Back in 2019, I made a video discussing the end of record-breaking roller coasters. To summarize, I said that even though there would still be record-breaking attractions, they won't be built in the same pace as they were in the past. Well, now that record-breaking roller coasters are no longer the driving force of the industry, something else has to take its place, and I believe that will be the era of the family coaster. Not too long ago, SeaWorld Parks announced two of their new for 2024 attractions. SeaWorld Orlando is getting a multi-launching family roller coaster by B&M, and Busch Gardens Tampa, which is only about an hour away from SeaWorld Orlando, is getting a family inverted roller coaster, also from the same manufacturer, B&M. Normally, I would simply say that this is an off-year project. First build a family-centered attraction, then a year or two open a massive new roller coaster. Well, that may have been the old formula, but I believe there is a clear trend in investing more money into family-centered attractions. Over the past couple years, more projects revolve around the whole family than simple thrill-seeking junkies. Case in point, in 2023, we saw the opening of Big Bear Mountain, a multi-launching roller coaster by Vacoma. Located at Dollywood, inside their Shady Grove section of the park, this new attraction is shaping up to be one of their best investments. The ride has been bringing in the crowds, and what's even better, the coaster has a very low height requirement, so more kids can enjoy the ride. The Six Flags chain opened three new family roller coasters last year, Rookie Racer at Six Flags St. Louis, and two attractions called Kid Flash Cosmic Coaster, one at Six Flags Over Georgia, and one at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Cedar Point opened Wild Mouse, an updated version to the classic spinning Wild Mouse coaster. SeaWorld San Diego opened Arctic Rescue, a multi-launching jet ski roller coaster that is family-oriented. Busch Gardens Williamsburg opened the same style of coaster with Dark Coaster, an indoor multi-launching family attraction. The trend is also continuing on into 2024 via Cedar Fair and other theme park chains. We have Good Gravy, a family boomerang coaster going to Holiday World, and Snoopy's Soapbox Racers, another Vacoma family boomerang, this one going to Kings Island. Six Flags Great Escape is opening Bobcat, a family-friendly wooden roller coaster from Gravity Group. Before continuing on, do me a favor by clicking on that like button, and if you are new to my channel and love everything roller coasters, be sure to subscribe. So, why are we seeing a growing trend of family roller coasters? Well, I think this is a multifaceted answer, but let me do my best to dissect. First was the pandemic. Even though it's been three years since COVID started, its effects are still seen in the industry. There has been projects that got scrapped, downscaled, even ride openings that got pushed back a few years. Depending on what part of the country your park was located, it may not have opened back up until mid-2021, and even that, it was limited operations. Parks were strapped with cash and had to basically comatose their business in hopes that they could revive it at a later date. Along those same lines, unemployment was at an all-time high and parks were feeling the heat. How could you even consider opening a new attraction when you can't even properly staff for the attractions that you have now? Thankfully, most of these problems have been remedied, but it will take some time for a theme park to fully recover financially. Which is why going for a smaller, family-friendly attraction than a mega-budget roller coaster is the safer bet. Next is our audience. This past year, we saw a decent amount of amusement parks enforce a chaperone policy. No longer is the day where you can drop off your teens or tweens and let them roam the park unattended. With too many incidents of violence to cite, parks had enough and had to take drastic measures. This, of course, will start to shape the demographics of who is visiting your theme park. Instead of a bunch of teenagers running around, we should start to see more parents in the parks with their kids. As someone who frequently visits amusement parks with the entire family, I still get excited to ride the latest and greatest roller coaster, but when I come across an attraction that I can enjoy with my kids and still have a good time, that is a real winner in my book. This is why Big Bear Mountain was such a success because the whole family was able to enjoy it. Also, though I don't believe it has the same success as Big Bear Mountain, riding Arctic Rescue at SeaWorld San Diego with my whole family was one of the highlights of the year. Watching both my dad and my daughter riding a roller coaster together, having a fun time was priceless. 
Really though, it's all about the money. Would you as a theme park operator want to build a new attraction that caters towards an audience that tends to be rowdy, cause mischief, ew, and not spend as much cash as an adult would? I think not. Families clearly spend the most cash when visiting a park, be it buying food, merchandise, souvenirs, or maybe splurging more for that premium skip the line package. They're the ones coming to the park with the deepest pockets. Plus, if you're an enthusiast, which chances are, well you are because you're watching this video, most major amusement parks already have a decent collection of thrilling roller coasters. To us, they may be old hat or something, but to the rest of the audience, that old hat still has some decent life left in it. Even the CEO of Six Flags mentioned that they already have a decent collection of roller coasters in the park, why build more? So yeah, they have the thrills, so to speak, now it's time to take aim at the families. This trend is not going away anytime soon. I expect to see more family-centered attractions coming in the near future, and less major thrill rides. I know that Cedar Point just opened Wild Mouse, and their next coaster is just a major overhaul of a past ride, but I would gamble that their next ground-up coaster will be another family-friendly ride. I already mentioned that SeaWorld Orlando and Busch Gardens Tampa are building family-friendly roller coasters for 2024, but the rumors are also pointing in the direction of another family-centered coaster for Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Three of the four roller coasters coming to Universal Studios' Epic Universe will be family-oriented, which is a drastic change when Islands of Adventure opened. That park had three extreme thrill machines and only one family-friendly roller coaster. Knott's Berry Farm, a park that was once rumored to get a Giga and or Hyper Coaster, is now getting a revamp of their Camp Snoopy featuring a brand new family coaster. Now, some of you might be wondering, what about Iron Menace coming to Dorney Park, Top Thrill 2 coming to Cedar Point, or even that rumored launching wing coaster for King's Dominion? Doesn't that prove that parks will still build extreme coasters? As I said earlier, yes, parks will continue to build large coasters, but they will no longer be the focal point as they once were in the past. Even manufacturers are getting into the trend. Bolliger and Mabillard, B&M for short, who is well known for building roller coasters that feature a minimum height requirement between 52 and 54 inches, he is already constructing two family coasters with a lower height requirement. They have their family launching coaster and family inverted roller coaster. Rocky Mountain Construction, who up until this point has only built extreme coasters, announced last year their Wild Moose Coaster, a fun twist to the classic Wild Mouse style coaster. SNS Sansai Technologies is getting in the game with their single rail coaster, but unlike RMC, which their single rail is an extreme coaster, SNS is focusing on a more tame, family friendly layout. Bottom line, the family coaster market is just getting started. I expect to see more manufacturers getting in on the action. So, you as an enthusiast, should you be worried about this new trend? Does this mean that parks will eventually stop building extreme coasters? No, of course not. Parks have to find their audience and cater to that demographic. Eventually, extreme coasters will be all the rage once again, especially when we reach that point where many of their current coasters are beyond their service life. For now, I think parks will be playing it a little bit more safe and build more family-centered coasters, but this trend won't last forever. Well, that's a wrap on today's video. What do you think? Are we on the verge of a new era of roller coasters? Let me know down in the comments. Until next time, this is X-Cream Thrills.